Hi, good morning, set tools. I'm Mr. Xiao. And today I want to continue the lesson on comparison and complete this skills worksheet with you. So let's recap briefly that comparison is where we use not one, but two sources to draw out what we can see between the two sources. Often there should be a similarity or an agreement and there should be a difference or a disagreement. And we said that the similarity takes up one combined inference from both sources because we are saying that the sources are similar, they are saying the same thing, and so we just employ a single combined inference that draws out the ideas of both sources. Whereas when we have a difference, we need to look at a set of contrasting inferences. And the way we bring out these contrasting inferences, we said was via a criterion. So an example of a criterion would be, for instance, whether British rule was beneficial for the people of Singapore. If one source says that British rule was beneficial because it brought about development and better economic growth, the other source must say that British rule was not, was not beneficial. So again, for the difference, so let me just recap this briefly because difference is trickier. If we say that sources X and Y are different in terms of And suppose we decide that source X was not beneficial. Because the British were ineffective at solving food and housing shortages. Then source Y must tell me British rule was beneficial to the people of Singapore because the British enabled the infrastructural development and economic growth. So this is a classic example of This is a classic example of a difference argument where I start with my ATQ and then I cross out the criterion right ATQ in terms of whether British was beneficial criterion and then I stretch out the set of contrasting inferences and each inference has to be explained. So this is what I meant and what we have covered in the previous lesson, which is that when we have a similarity, we do one combined inference. When we have a difference, we highlight the criterion. And using the criterion, we flesh out the set of contrasting inferences, which are explained, and we conclude with the evidence. And we said previously that, that or take a look at this, read this on your own time, pause the video if you need to. Uh, so you can understand where we have gone with similarity and difference. And we said at last time that this box on this page was your answering frame that, uh, that supports you in attempting and tackling all sorts of comparison questions all the way to O level exam. So you can see if we were to do a similarity that I would just jump straight to the combined inference sources X and Y are similar, both sources tell me that what, because why. Whereas if I were to do a difference, I would need the criterion. Sources X and Y are different in terms of what. Uh, source X tells me this, and 
source Y tells me that. And these set of inferences have to be contrasting, have to be opposing. The, the mutually contradictory ideas must be fleshed out by the criteria you craft. Okay. Um, and I concluded the last video by jumping briefly into a comparison of purpose. And we said that the purposes of two sources can be similar or different. And we said that if the purpose is similar, we just need one combined purpose. So just like how, just like how we do a combined inference for a similarity, if we were to do a purpose comparison and we find that the purposes of two sources are similar, we just need one combined purpose. Whereas if we were to find a difference in purpose, we think that the sources have uh, opposing agendas, uh, different agendas, different intended outcomes, different things they want to achieve, then we would need to write two contrasting purposes. Right? So the purpose comparison really is just a step up from the typical content comparison where we add the verb, the audience, and the outcome to the inferences we have already crafted. And can we flip to page four? And let me remind you that in page four, we examine how to write a comparison of purpose answer. We said that by looking at sources B and C, source B is published, you know, quite recently on the historical website is in this day and age, people are still reading this website. The audience is people in the modern present world. And source C was written in 1955 at the uh, apex and in the aftermath of the riots, uh, the Hockley bus riots. And this American guy is writing to American universities. So just by looking back at the provenance of sources B and C, they're in completely different historical time periods, written to completely different audiences. Source B is talking to Singaporeans today. Source C is talking to American universities in 1955. You could guess that they have different intended outcomes, different purposes. And that's why we went ahead with crafting the difference in purpose for, for question two. So can I just give you two minutes to look at how this difference in purpose is done? You should pause the video and read this answer for yourself. And having done that, let me dissect it. The first statement is always the ATQ statement. Always answer the question, similar or different. In this case, it's different, right? Because the command word in the question here was different. And so I started with source B and C are different in their purpose. And then I flesh out the two VAMOs, the two VAMOs, right? VAMO 1, source B wants to educate online readers. Take note that this verb here is a new verb, it's educate, because this is an educational history website. It wants to educate online readers, right? That both the police and the processing workers and students were to blame for the riots because both sides use violent means. Whereas source C wants to inform, there's a report, so it wanted to inform, give information, give uh, details, give insider knowledge to the American universities. How do you know this is the American universities? How do we know the audience? It's in the source provenance. Here, right? Uh, and what do they want to say? That it's really the workers and students to blame, not the police just the workers and students because these workers and students rejected the fair settlement and stirred up the bad feelings. And notice that the message one and message two for this comparison of purpose really just came from your difference in content. It came from this box. In other words, once you have decided that the purpose is different, we just have to fit in the respective verbs, audiences, 
and outcomes to each inference, and we have a difference in purpose. So the difference in purpose is really just using what you know from purpose and mixing it in with the comparison that you have been doing so far. Okay. Um, so today in this lesson, I want to cover quite quickly uh, the remaining three questions. And you should take this video as a means of checking your answer and for revising and reviewing because I think the best way to learn is to practice writing out your answer first and then using the video as a way to check if you are correct and where you have gone wrong. And that's how we learn. So source on uh, question three. How similar are sources B and D? What's the command word? The command word is similar. And so we would need to APQ by using the words uh, similar and different. Right? So if the command word is similar, but ATQ is similar, different. So source B and D, let me pull down source B. Let's look at this. How similar are they? Uh, we should always read the sources in tandem and we highlight the, the parts where we think they're similar. So, Source B is uh, quite critical of the of the workers, right? And the students. And the students are parading around and criticizing the police. Source D is quite sympathetic to the workers. People do not strike for nothing. The company is at fault. The workers told the government not to use the hoses. Oh, and the police were so, you know, they they were completely insensitive. They just went ahead and used these high-powered hoses. They hit the strikers, and that's why the strikers rioted. So in the sense, source D is the workers are very, cast the workers in a sympathetic light. Workers are not to blame. Um, whereas source B is a bit more balanced. It just highlighted that Yes, the police did hit the workers, but the workers also hit back, and the Chinese students are just stirring up trouble for no reason. Okay, so where are the similarities and where are the differences? Oh, I think one, one similarity might be here, right? The police use the water hoses. So, So maybe just by looking at these two lines, I think the similarity emerges that the police did use some sort of, of tools and, and uh, to control the crowd, which, which led to greater uh, feelings and emotions and violence. Let's capture this before we forget it. So let's start. Hmm. Sources B and D are similar. We call that for similarity, do we need a, we need a criterion? The steps for similarity, we don't, we don't need a criterion because we, when we jump to the combined inference, uh, the combined inference itself will co contain the criterion. So we just go straight to similar in telling us that um, law enforcement officers employed um tools uh and weapons to control the angry crowds of laborers and, and bus company employees right can we say that i think we can this is evident from source B. Uh, which, which exacerbated the, the anger 
of the people, the protesters of the which states the police deployed water poses. Okay, so I think we have one similarity. I'm sure you could find another one. In fact, we can copy all the way to here because I think this really highlights how the hoses are uh, inflame the situation. So let's look at the answer we have crafted so far. Sources B and D are similar. In Thailand, that the law enforcement agencies employed tools and weapons to control the angry crowd, which associated the anger of the protester in the situation. Right, this would be our combined inference. And then this would be our evidence. Perfect. Make sense? We have done this, we have done the similarity. Okay, so now we need to plan for difference, right? And for difference, like we said, uh, we need, we can't just jump to the inference. Difference is, uh, difference is more, it has more steps than similarity. We need to also write the criteria. So difference in terms of, and then we need to craft the criteria. So let's look at the sources for a difference. We said upon the first read that source B is quite balanced. Source B says both sides are at fault. Uh, and source D is quite sympathetic. Source D seems to say that uh, the workers are not at fault, it's the company and the government. So how can we turn this into a difference? How can we turn this into a difference? Right, so these three lines, people do not strike for nothing. The bus company ignored the, 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 the workers. The, the government ignored the workers. Um, whereas here, the workers and students had grievances, they hit back, they paraded, they paraded the, the, the body. So, So maybe we can talk about who was to blame. That sounds like a good criteria, right? Who was to blame? Um, source B tells me that both the police and the workers, laborers, were to blame for the riots because they all sides all sides used violence on each other. Okay. Whereas source B tells me that only the so I'm gonna just to change police to law enforcement. Only the law enforcement, but not the laborers who are to blame for the riot because so I think maybe this part is the part we want, right? Because the laborers had a genuine grievance and and the law enforcement did not their request entirely. Okay, so here are my set of contrasting inferences. What do we end with? We end with, um, we end with the evidence, right?
so here workers and students hit back they had grievances so probably this whole set of lines are the evidence oh uh, and here people do not strike for nothing the union warned the government to stop using the hoses okay So let's just put this together. Uh, does this look correct? They are different in terms of who was to blame for the outbreak. Source B says both law enforcement and laborers because all sides use violence. Um, whereas Source B tells you that only a law enforcement but not the laborers because the laborers had a genuine cause, right? People do not strike for nothing. And law enforcement ignored the request. We need one government stop using high powered holes, yet the hoses were used. So I think we also need this part to show that the, the show that the the law enforcement ignored them, yet the hoses were used. Okay. I think if you pause here and use this answer to check your own answer, you would um be able to see the gaps, be able to see how we did the comparison. And this is exactly what we need to do. So again, pause here, look at the answer, and see if you have gotten something similar. Uh, and then let's do the purpose, let's do the purpose. So, source B is an online article that's around today. Source B is an online article, an interview that's also published today. So the time period is about the same. Could they have a similar purpose? So they have the same time period. They both have, um, uh, the same audience, right? Singaporeans are going to be reading this online article. Singaporeans will read this interview. The audience is the same. But what is the book? This is by Otto Fong. The interview is with Otto Fong. The interview E, the Otto Fong is the son of the trade union leader Fong Si Suan. And if you know your historical context, Fong Si Suan is one of the leaders uh, of this particular hot Lee bus strike and hot Lee bus riot. So Otto Fong might, might have a stake in this, right? Otto Fong might be thinking, I need to clean up my father's legacy. I need to make sure that people see my father as a good guy. He might have an agenda. So the book with Otto Fong here, who's the son of Fong Si Suan, he suspects he wants to convince. He wants to convince Singaporeans about something. He has an agenda, right? Because he's the son, he has an agenda. On his agenda. And in fact, he, he highlighted people do not strike for nothing. This is the sympathetic to workers source, right? This source is sympathetic to workers. So, this agenda potentially to whitewash the strikers. Whitewash meaning push the blame away. And if you're pushing the blame away from someone, you're pushing it to someone else, right? To the government, police. Is that what he's doing? This one, online history article, right? We said that the verb is probably going to be educate. And if your verb is educate, you don't have much of a political agenda. You're not trying to push their opinions away. Remember the outcome we used here? Educate so that online readers will have a nuanced and balanced view of Singapore history and be able to judge past events and actors. So it feels like the outcome here is about this sort of getting people to have a balanced view, getting people to know Singapore history. So even though, uh, Tech Tools notice this, even though the two sources are published in the same time period. The two sources have the same audience as Singaporeans. Their verbs and their intended outcomes are different, are different. And so what kind of purpose comparison are we gunning for? We are gunning for a difference in purpose. Can you see that? Pause and take a look at the two sources. Pause and take a look. 
can you see why we are going to gun for a difference in profit? If you can see that, let's let's do it. So, so I'm just going to transform this into a difference in purpose. Sources B and D are different in their purpose. Source B wants to, and just I'm just going to use this now, educate Singaporeans. That, right? So, her audience. Next is the message. How do I get the message? Group one, audience one. The message is right here, right here. Message one. Now I need to do the outcome. This is done so that, so that, so that online readers will have a nuance and balanced view. They will judge the party events. Okay. Oh no, I clicked. Sorry, I clicked. A link by accident. You didn't see that. Let's continue. So this is done so that. Online readers will have a lot of balance view, outcome one. Okay. Any issue? No issue. Let's carry on. So we have the first source purpose. We need the second one now. Source P wants to. We said they want to convince, right? Here's an agenda. Convince Singaporeans. Convince. Second book, second audience. That. So the message, second message, again, we just grab directly from our comparison of difference. Why? Evidence. And outcome. Outcome again, we go, we start with the audience. So this is all your purpose start coming back. So uh, uh, I just realized that in this case, we need to also match the audiences here. Sorry, I didn't even catch that. Right? Audience must match in your outcome. Audience must match in your outcome. Singaporeans will. So what? What would they do? Um, sympathetic, right? Watch the strike. Will believe that the strikers had a just cause and, and form the view that, in fact, it was the government to blame for the hot Lee bus ride. Strikers had a just cause, the striking workers. So this one has a political agenda. It's to change the views of people in Singapore, right? This would would um create a better legacy for Hong Si Swan and the union leader, right? Uh, Otto Fong really wants to make his father look good. What have we learned from this exercise? Uh, we have learned that. Firstly, when we do the comparison, we start with ATQ, we do similar, we do different. 
Secondly, that we evaluate the provenances here, looking at the time period, the audience and the intended outcome. And that's how we figure out whether the purpose is similar or different. And finally, if we know that the purpose is different, we can just patch up our different comparison with the verb, audience and outcome to create a difference in purpose answer. And so we can actually drop this already. We don't need it. We just need to have the difference in purpose. Similar in the combined inference, difference in purpose. That's all we need for the full answer. One last little point, which is that, which is that because my difference in purpose use my contrasting inferences that I've already crafted earlier. In fact, in fact, if you had made the wrong judgment, if you thought that the purpose was different, but in fact the purposes were similar, if you wrote the wrong thing here, you wrote a different purpose, even if the purposes are similar, I would still credit you for the difference you identified in the content in your contrasting inferences. So as long as your inferences have the contrast, you will still then get this credit for a difference in content for the contrasting inferences. Um, actually, I intended to go through all three questions, but because we took a while and set up, I only finished question three. So perhaps in the next video, I will complete questions four and five. Uh, sorry for the sound quality is bad today because of the heat set. Uh, and thank you for your time.